Hello and welcome to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever. Today, the ladder again. Got a Cybern versus UEF matchup. Between two 1800 rated players, you do not know me. This is Tagada. And we have Koiskix, uh, previously known as Koisq. And. I believe I heard somewhere a long time ago that this is Ajax's brother, but either way, he has played with Ajax in a few tournaments. Uh, played some 2v2 with Ajax. And yes, he's actually gone up in rating quite a lot recently. He used to be much lower rated, uh, several hundred points lower than this. Uh, but he's got a lot better in the last um, few months. Been playing ladder and probably just playing more in general. Nice to see another player getting to a pretty strong level. And we're on Ambush Pass, 5x5, classic ladder map. Here comes a lab, two labs in fact. You do not know me, looks like he's going for second air, perhaps. Has his pgens aligned for that adjacency. So you can you can do a pretty sick build order on this map. I casted before Montana, doing a very low power build to get a lot of factories up very quickly using the tree reclaim there's a lot of mass reclaim to use as well so a lot of different ways to build on this map it's one of the things about subcom that's so great is the depth in in builds is pretty amazing i don't know of any other game that just allows for so many different options thanks to basically thanks to the the unique reclaim mechanic and uh, also the brilliant engineers, the best units in the game. Build power and economy if you're reclaiming. Now this unit is going to die. The radar is not the right thing to try and block shots with. It has no HP. Oh, you might get a second kill here as well. Tagada taking a lot of damage. He can behind behind the mechs. That's a good way to save an engineer, but he's not going to do it this time. The Mantis turret turn rate did not allow <laughs> Tagata to kill the lab. So he ran past the lab and then the Mantis turret had to turn and uh, that gave the lab just enough time. So we have a third factory going up. But meanwhile, Tagata with a much much better build order he's probably stalling power right now but he isn't see there's only seven p gens he's been assisting the acu heavily with at least two engineers for a lot of the time and we have five factories fifth one about to be completed he probably wouldn't have these mass problems if he hadn't uh, lost those two poor engineers he also has more more reclaim in his base but uh, that's a nice build order Compared over here, we have only three factories. About two factories worth of mass in the bank. And that's because he's using his ACU. Basically, he's using his ACU, leaving the base a lot sooner. And so he's going to secure the expansion faster than his opponent, but he's going to be at a factory deficit and therefore a tank deficit uh, quite soon. At the minute, we have even numbers, but with all of these factories pumping out Mantis and also some engineers. Tagada should take a tank lead soon, but we can see the generated mass is quite different thanks to these this nice expansion, which is also completely secure. I definitely would finish this factory. He, he does need it. So no air from these players. Now we do have an RT. This would be a good time to start working on the mid and 
getting the reclaim. These buildings have significant reclaim and also the PGENs and mass fabs do. And the PDs. PD is always good for some reclaim. Have an early raider. It's quite far back. I don't think this uh, is too good of a choice. It's uh, too far back and kind of expensive. One at the front of the base is very, very nice. Covers a lot of ground. Can help a lot. Radars in the early game, quite expensive. 80 mass and also take one power generator to run. You can see, not adding many pgens at all. And that's a good thing. On 5x5, you don't need to add many pgens. You can just really continue building land factories with little power. But So you can do that, but the danger is that then it's going to be difficult to... Uh, change your game plan so moving to an ACU upgrade is going to be more difficult uh, moving to air obviously going to be more difficult and generally just transitioning between different strategies will be difficult if you are not building power but it can give you a big advantage in the land spam in the first well eight ten minutes of the game so you can see a lot more pigeons here and that's going to give Koisku, Koisku, uh more options but he is going to be perhaps slightly lacking units making good use of his ACU here Tagada is ready with a PD but uh, do we have an RT oh here's an RT but it's actually going to die to this, this PD in mid unfortunately so no progress to be made. He can spot quite a significant army and it looks like he's going to retreat now. Needs to also protect his engineer but or his uh, PD here from this Medusa. That has four vets. What? Oh, I guess this was killing stuff in mid. <laughs> so it has quite a lot of vet. And now Tagada really struggling for power. So... Although he didn't add PGENs and that was fine for a while, he sort of waited too long and also has two radars, which uh, he just can't afford. So he's adding more PGENs now, you can see them queued. But he's in a, in a bit of difficulty. Could do with uh, more tree reclaim. It's definitely something you want to work on is just cleaning Cleaning your base of trees so you get all those, all that power and mass. Koiski retreating very far back, and that leads me to believe he's going to make an AC upgrade. Pretty nice balance for making an AC upgrade. You want to have some overflow. It's also a good idea to make an early power storage. Ooh, this is a good, good raid. Drawing a lot of units back. And uh, getting some mech skills. You you should. Uh, it's a good idea to make a power surge early on. To so you have 9k in storage instead of 4k. If we look at the cost of upgrades, 21k for T2, and the more likely one you're going to use the gun, 24k. So having an extra 5k energy in storage is going to help quite a lot. And also, you're going to need that storage anyway, because you're going to want to overcharge. So, making a power storage smooths that transition as you're making your upgrade. Also, bad time to start start making air, I would say, but... He, he does have quite a lot of mass in the bank, so... It looks, looks okay for him. He could even... I mean... There's a lot of options here. One is just scale up more more production, more T1 land production. Moving to T2 land after this gun is done most likely. That would be a good option. And um, you could even make a T2 max. Now making T2 max is kind of dangerous without T2 land. It could be some TML or something. But he can see there's no, there's no air here. And there's also no... No tech upgrade, so he has a lot of options, and uh, 
if you transition to to one of these different things before your opponent sort of put them on the back foot if you have t2 and they don't then Taggart is going to feel under pressure to make use of his t1 land while he can certainly I think the gun is a great option it's really the best option generally on 5x5 map uh, just so powerful mostly we're going to have t1 Tagada is afraid of the air. You can see a couple of scouts from the air factory. He isn't actually building any air now. But a couple of scouts from the air factory. And Tagada has built a lot of anti-air. And <laughs> that's that's just great. He doesn't even have to make a bomber now. He's all, already forced nine mobile anti-airs. And there's probably some in the infinite build queues. So he's going to continue building more most likely so this is good this is all good we have a lot of power and that's also he can use that for his overcharges which is quite good for him and he has a lot of units in his base I think he has significantly more units here than than Tagata does at the front Now, although he has the gun, well, he definitely needs to try and be in there and getting kills as soon as possible. There's also the option of moving towards mid, towards Tagada's ACU. If we look at how many units he has, we have about 100 T1 units, 75, 25 tanks to Artes. We have a few more for Tagada, and also, in fact, we have T2 mechs. So important to note when your opponent has T2 Max, he actually has a lot of mass in storage. So he's now moving to T2 land. I think that's a good choice. He, but this gun upgrade is potentially very, very dangerous. U UEF ACU is it's a very powerful weapon. And Tagadet cheekily grabbing these mid maxes. I think, uh, oh, we already have T2 land now for Koise kicks, and I think he could could have could be using his 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 units more. Sh could be supporting his ACU now. This is extremely dangerous from Tagada. It looks like he has a death wish here. Koise kicks was <laughs> happy to idle with his gun ACU, which is not the best option. But then. Tagada says, no wait, you should be using that, and uh, walks his commander to him on all these units. You can see he's already taken 2,500 damage. Goyskix is just getting vet from these T1 land units. He's moving in closer. Does he realize that this is a gun upgrade? So when you're, when you're zoomed out versus the UEF, there is actually a problem, uh, well, not a problem, but you don't have the uh, doubled rate of fire for the UEF ACU as you do with others. So you just hear the same rate of fire and you may assume that he does not have the gun upgrade, but actually he does because the UEF ACU does double damage instead of doubling its uh, rate of fire. But uh, I'm sure he's realized by now that this is a gun upgrade at ACU. And it has 42 kills already. Looking for its second vet. We have pillars out. We have a huge mass field outside of Koiskik's base. But uh, Tagada is stealing as much of it as possible. It's nice to have that forward factory. Getting the reclaim that he can. We have another reclaim field here should be available for Koi's kicks. Tagada needs uh, his own gun upgrade really and even then it's going to be very difficult to stop this ACU. 10,000 HP, 4,000 for Tagada. It's time for Koi's kicks to push. He also is a T2 max behind. No, in fact two T2 maxes. So he needs to do some damage. Map control 
does not mean as much if you uh, if you have no T2 Maxes and your opponent does. And we have quite a few pillars. We have nine pillars out now. Tagada using the Rhinos, not electing to go for the Hoplites. Hoplites are a dangerous option versus versus UEF. A UEF player making pillars and has a gun, gun ACU. <coughs> One wrong move and they will die and pillars are pretty quick and the UAF gun ACU has quite a lot of range of damage so going for the rhinos and I think that's a good option. I also we should see more more Medusa mixed in. You can see the rhinos doing quite very very well actually here. That's a very solid victory. Many pillars died here. And Tagada needs to make this count, get this reclaim as fast as possible and uh, expand. He has lost some map control. And it looks like he just wants to hold. He's making the gun as we speak. And Kois kicks not using this ACU. That's that's I think what happened here is he got this uh, reclaim field and also this reclaim field. So he's thinking generally when you have these reclaim fields, the idea is you know, you don't need to take a risk and push. You can just suck up the reclaim and then you'll be fine. Just uh, don't throw away the advantage you may have. Just get, get your get your reclaim, use it to increase your advantage, and then attack. But I think in this case it was actually a mistake. He did have the gun upgrade, a lot of HP, Tagada is on low HP, has no upgrade, and yes he has this reclaim but he is actually behind in T2 Mexes. He had quite, it's quite a few pillars there. I think if he grabs the majority of his army, comes with the ACU, I think he can just break through the space. Just run through like a knife through butter, but he didn't, he elected to just sit on the reclaim, make use of it, but as he was doing that, he, he lost, gave some away to his opponent, and now actually this is a very bad fight for Koiskix again, I think. The Rhino's doing a lot of damage. And still with some some mantis in there, but in fact the reinforcements arrive, and this is going to leave a lot of reclaim to be fought over. We'll have to see who gets it, but we have engineers in the area for both players trying their best to gather that mass. And this this map control here is basically far more important than map control elsewhere in the map. Let's look at the reclaim amount. Koiskiks, wow there's so much reclaim done here. You can see it's been a very active active game, a lot of battles. We have 12,000 reclaim, 13,000 uh, to 11,000 for Tagada and now we have air. We have the air factory finally making some air units. He had some inties. And now making some bombers. Good idea to uh, kill reclaiming engineers. This ACU too far too idle. This is it's quite disappointing. Tagada now moving to the front with his gun ACU, gun and stealth. He's going to be. He's going to tip the battle in his favor. It looked pretty good for him already with all of these rhinos but the, with the add addition of the gun ACU it's going to be really good for him and he's going to be able to secure all of this reclaim thanks to that that's a really nice adjustment to realize where the important part of the map is at this moment and it was this large patch of reclaim so relocates his ACU newly upgraded and also Koiskix is not going to see that that uh, movement of the ACU until he appears on the front line and starts overcharging pillars. So, 
Nice move there. The stealth on the ACU is very useful. This MML has to run away, and now it looks nice for Tagada. The advantages Koizkix had. Well, advantages don't always last forever, and you have to actually make use of them when you have them, otherwise they will just disappear with time. And now, the advantage lies firmly with Tagada. 26 Rhinos, 27. And we have, for Koizkix, only 19 pillars. Also, pillars are about only two-thirds the cost. Oh, Tagada in danger here. You can see his health dropping rapidly. I thought Koizkix might go for the kill here. But now, bringing his ACU in, this, this, there's still chances here for him to do a lot. This ACU is very, very powerful. You can see the T1 production has been stopped. That's a lot of T2 production here. And sending more engineers to get the reclaim, but you can see now we were at 13,000 to 11,000 in reclaim from for Koizkix, in favor of Koizkix. 13 to 11, now we're 13 to 17 in favor of Tagada. Massive differential coming basically from this field. All those T2 wrecks and T1 wrecks, so a massive differential in a very short space of time and he had the build power to make use of it as a T2 P gen here and he now Tagada retreats without leaving too much behind there is some reclaim to grab and some in this location but he has saved most of his army from the wrath of the fearsome UEF ACU And maybe we need some. Well, we need some switch up. Perhaps a, a nanocom would have been great. We didn't see a, any T2P gen go up. We don't have any TMD. There's no TMD here at all. We have T2P gen. Oh, apologies. We do have a TMD. It's in a bad place though. You could definitely TML. Perhaps even the HQ with the positioning of that TMD, it's uh, not in the correct spot. You have to build your TMD in front of your buildings, not behind them. But uh, also one TMD will die very quickly to some, some T1 bombers. Just build uh, four, five T1 bombers and then he could snipe this TMD and kill a bunch of stuff. Just have to allow some missiles to load before you go for that snipe. But here in this base, we have no TMD whatsoever. Unless I am quite blind, more blind than I am, and I think I am. Koise kicks now up to four vets. Tag it out on the mere two vet levels and they're trading fire these ACs there are so many rhinos but three of them just got popped and more of them are in the firing line Medusa going down getting one shotted another rhino disappears and actually that's his final vet for Koizkix. One thing about overcharge, it's not leaving much uh, <laughs> not leaving much reclaim at all for either player. And this is very dangerous. Tagada needs to bring his army back. He this is this is the kind of move that can ha kill you in mere seconds in on a 5x5 you can see pillars moving in from the right he needs to be very careful here he's losing a lot of HP Koisky needs to continue moving get the overcharges in and the reinforcements and this may be the final 
engagement. We have gestures moving into Koi's kicks. The rhinos have to focus the ACU. Tagada is dropping low. And now Koi's kicks being focused by all of these rhinos. And Tagada takes the win just a about that was closer than it needed to be. Well played from Tagada. Guys kicks just ah uh, unfortunate. I mean he made the right decision. That gun upgrade was the right decision, had his economy balanced perfectly for it, made it quickly, efficiently but he didn't make use of it. Didn't make use of it. And that really cost him in the end. Tagada took some key fights and managed to get the reclaim here. That that massive swing from 11k reclaim to 6 to uh, 17k. Uh, definitely swung the game also this. Uh, earlier T2 maxes were never punished and... He ultimately reaped the rewards from them. So we'll play both players. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Have a good one.